recording and we'll get into the screen share and uh, I'll keep on the lookout for Coach Greg. Okay, so let me get rid of this and get to my slideshow here. Get back up to the top. Okay, so uh, this is anything that has to do with uh, productivity and personal and professional development are my favorite topics. They also tend to be um, the most uh, well attended topics. I've noticed that. Uh, so uh, next year when we start up, I'll have plenty of that and hopefully I can get Coach Greg uh, on some of those next year as well. He's about to go back uh, to work at the base. Uh, he is a, a counselor, a licensed counselor, and he helps our soldiers uh, with decision making and uh, emotional uh, issues and things like that. So, uh, but anyway, we're going to talk about three to thrive. And if you could mute yourself, that would be awesome. And I'm going to start with uh, the definition, the concept and the definition of three to thrive. And I first came across this idea from a business consultant named Lance Wallnow. Uh, he's very professional uh, and very uh, profitable consultant. And this is what he does and what has helped propel his business to a, a new level. And uh, I've tweaked it a little bit to fit me. Uh, so, you know, feel free to do that, but I would definitely adopt the overall idea. And so Three to Thrive is a personal and professional development technique that helps you focus on three areas that need to be developed for what I call 90 day projects. And 90 day projects are for me, a great way to divide up my year with wanting to get things done. And there's a lot of research that, you know, talk about accomplishing goals. And I'm sure all of you have heard that you're supposed to have like a 10 year goal, a five year goal, then a one year goal, and then break all of that down into tasks and time segments. Well, I have found that I don't function very well with 10 year goals or five year goals. Uh, I definitely usually have an idea of where I want to be in those years, personally and professionally, but it's just too tedious. I don't like it. It's probably not necessarily a good thing, but like coach uh, Greg said, uh, this morning that uh, he's 55. So if he does that, that puts him at 65 and he doesn't necessarily want to think that far ahead. <laughs> so for me, I love the idea of 90 day or quarterly projects. And I'll show you all some examples and how I do it and things like that. So um, when you get your 90 day project, you can fill up your year by quarters of the things you want to accomplish but also give yourself uh, permission to carry one 90 day project over to the next 90 days if you need to, because life and obstacles and things can sometimes prolong that project. And I had to do that uh, this last year myself. So I wanna give you some examples. Uh, the uh, one that I just accomplished in the third quarter was a podcast launch, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, the second one is a personal uh, project I had of transitioning to keto and training three times a week in a more effective way. I'll explain that in a second. And then a third one was to pay off one card and my car in uh, a 90 day uh, segment. And I also accomplished that actually early. And uh, so we're going to break those things down in a second. But let me give you the three that you need to thrive. That's the crux of this uh, principle. And you're going to have an opportunity to practice uh, today. So the first one that you need is knowledge. Knowledge is the gathering and research of facts, truths, and principles that you have to have in order to accomplish your goal or accomplish your project. And I get my knowledge from, of course, books, uh, Google research, asking others or interviewing people that have done it uh, themselves before you, uh, mentoring and courses. 
And courses can be college courses, online courses. There's a lot of great uh, resources out there for you as far as courses. Uh, my personal favorites, LinkedIn Learning. And also I love Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. And so you get the books, you get the knowledge, you get the things that you need. But you want to be careful that you don't have so much fun getting knowledge that you don't actually start developing the skill. And that can be a personality constraint that we'll get into in a second. So the knowledge and gathering knowledge can be a lot of fun, but it's to serve the purpose of the second, uh, I guess you would say, uh, of the three that you need. And that is skill. So skill is the ability that comes from the knowledge. So the definition of skill means doing something well. And it implies that it takes both time and practice. So I always tell my clients and myself to extend grace toward yourself because uh, you need to know that you're not going to know how to do something new well right off the bat. And so uh, if you've attended it at my trainings over the last, gosh, three years, we're going into our fourth year at the chamber. One of the, um, the ways I learned this lesson very well was in 2016, I believe, is either 16 or 17. And I had taken a course on launching my very first Facebook ad. And I you know, thought I did everything right. And then when I launched it, I had absolutely no results, not a single result. It was like crickets. And so I went ahead and ran the ad for two weeks. Like, you know, I was supposed to actually it was several months now that I think about it, because I didn't adopt the two week time frame until this last year. So I ran my ad for several months. Nothing happened. I stopped the ad and I was literally stuck or frozen for five months. I wouldn't even look at Facebook ads. I didn't go back to study maybe what I did wrong. I didn't attempt any more Facebook ads. And if you've ever um, been stuck, you know what I'm talking about. It's like no matter what you do, you can't get yourself out. And uh, so I then had to figure out, okay, why am I stuck? Why am I being so hard on myself? And so I realized uh, that it was my ego and my personality in particular, the D personality does not like failure at all. And so for me at that time, failure was a value statement. So I then began to work on how I process and view failure. And I learned that failure is feedback. And so that, I guess you could say revelation or insight, what it did is it uh, basically shifted my entire perspective. I started doing my Facebook ads again, saw success with those. And then I've been doing the same things I've learned for my local customers and getting them phenomenal results. So all of that to say is that during the skill, uh, I guess you would say stage, you need to give yourself grace and don't expect that you will be able to master something brand new right outside the gate. And that was the mistake I made. I thought I could just master it right outside the gate, make thousands and thousands of dollars. And when it didn't, I was devastated. And then the final one is personality constraints. So these are areas of your personality, whether a strength or a weakness that could prevent you from finishing your project. So let me um, give you this caveat that literally will help you in all areas of life. Any strength of your personality that is overextended will become a weakness. So for example, I'm what's called a DC personality, and I'll show you a snapshot of the personalities in a second, but I'm a DC personality combo. So what that means is I'm double task focused. So I get stuff done. I live to get stuff done. My favorite thing to do is to check things off of my list, but overextended in that strength means that I can ignore people. I can ignore their feelings. And I can get tunnel vision and miss better ways or solutions to problems. The other uh, problem that this strength uh, creates for me is it can be very difficult 
for me to rest and recreate or have rec recreation. And so uh, after 2016, because I love to work, to me, work is fun. I recognized I had to schedule in rest and recreation. And so it's now part of my, my business model and my calendar. And now I absolutely love it. But if I'm not careful, I can get back to it. So there might be strengths that you have, and I'm sure you can think of them right now, that overextended, uh, they have caused you problems or could cause you problems. So that's very important when we think about uh, the personality constraints right here. And again, we'll get into those in a second. And so I see that uh, Coach Greg, um, well, I thought he was on. Did he not get on? Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what happened. I was going to have him introduce himself, but we will go back into the, uh, back into the slides. Okay. So here is um, an example. Uh, and this is a financial goal I had in a personality constraint. So as a D personality, one of my strengths is I can make decisions fast, but sometimes I make them too fast. Now, the way this carried over into my um, financial goals is if I see something I want to get, I would just get it. And uh, I realized that that was not serving me anymore. So I made a quality decision to no longer make fast decisions on uh, purchases because when my husband's business failed in 2016, uh, we incurred a lot of debt. And so I made a quality decision to start paying that off. And so what happened is the personality constraint of making fast decisions was actually causing me uh, problems. So I got knowledge on how to build wealth. I targeted specific emotional intelligence issues that needed to be discovered and dealt with. And then I executed what I learned. And because of that, we went from the brink of bankruptcy to um, probably having all of our debt paid off early next year, possibly this year. So uh, one thing I'd like to bring in Coach Greg on that he talked about in our morning session was I always have to watch myself even to this day to make sure that I don't fall into previous bad habits. So let me get uh, Coach Greg uh, here with me on the screen and let him introduce himself a little bit real quick. And then I'd like him to, I'd like you, Coach Greg, to share again about the Lord of the Rings ring. That was really good on that aspect, but go ahead and take it away and introduce yourself. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Greg McNeil from Coach's Corner. And um, uh, Sherry introduced me this morning. One of the roles that I have here in the community is that I am with the Military and Family Life Counselor Program at Cannon Air Force Base, which is what initially brought me here to Clovis. And uh, as a part of being here, um, it was my role to also be connected with the community. Okay, so <clears throat> now the Lord of the Rings, is that what we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. so I was telling them about habits, you know, and like the financial goal, and I still have to watch myself to not go back to the old habit. And so you were talking about the Lord of the Rings ring earlier this morning. It was really good. Yeah. So one of the things that I thought was really uh, important about that. So Kate Blanchett's character, I think she was called the Lady of the Forest. And then, of course, we have Gandalf. So these two figures are really quite powerful in the series. But one of the things that we find out is that no matter how powerful they are, they are still subject to the power and the influence of the ring, which is going to literally trigger within them their dark habits or those places within themselves that they have to constantly stay on top of. Otherwise, they will be threatened to be overcome by that. And I use that example this morning to suggest that just because we may think that we are behind something 
or we put something past us, it really never leaves us. And all we have to do is to be placed in a certain type of experience and we can see that we can be threatened uh, to be overcome with the momentum of past habits. So the goal is we are constantly at work. Um, there's nothing that we've overcome in our past that cannot threaten us today if we don't continue to maintain those constructive habits that helped us to overcome those challenges earlier on. And that's what I was using. Yeah. And with the, you know, financial uh, goals I had and debt payoff, uh, the freedom has actually created the need to really guard that ring. You know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. a lot of times the good things in your life, the more freedom you have can actually cause those things you've overcome to come back. So it's like, oh, well, I can buy this now because I have more money. Well, should I? Am I reverting back to those old things? And so one of the things you said two classes ago that our very first training was let your scripts mentor you. Man, that was powerful. That has stood out to me since then. And your scripts are, uh, we talked about how they're the records that are playing in your thinking that mm -hmm. either serve you well or don't. But the ones that don't serve you well, all of a sudden you, you crash up against them, they stop you and you can allow them to mentor you. Can you um, go a little bit deeper on that? So, so one of the things that I mentioned this morning is that if we're on this chamber call, uh, Fast 45, most of us are successful in some regard in our business, um, some aspect of our lives. We feel that we're pretty much a success. And so when we tune in here, we want to learn different things that's going to help us to continue um, along that line. Um, Sherry, hit me with that again. I was my head, I'm ready to start talking about this book and I forgot just that. Well, question. it's just the scripts mentoring you. Okay, right. So um, one of the things about the thinking that we would have a challenge with, and you know it's a script working, is that even though we can be successful in some area of our lives, there are other places that we know that we continue to have challenges with. And those of us who are on the call, we probably already know intimately what those are. So when we keep bumping into that, whatever that challenge is, that's giving us a, an issue, how we handle customers, how we handle our temper in certain situations, that's a script. Mm -hmm. You get angry at something that you've been dealing with 10 years ago that you should be past, that's a script. And so when that comes up, instead of really getting angry with ourselves, that's the time when we have to say, okay, what can I do to figure out how to work with that? Because the script is trying to teach you something. If you're still getting upset about something that you thought you've dealt with 10 years ago, that means it's not done. And so that's the place that we go in and explore and say, well, what can I do? Why am I getting angry here? Why do I feel threatened here? Why do I feel excessively vulnerable in this condition? That's a script. Now, if we try to overcome it without working with it, we lose. And that's why it's still here today, 10 years later. When we see it as a mentor, if you will, now we can say, it's like, you know what? I actually have a problem with that. What can I do? And that's what allows us to take the next step in developing the habits so that we can change that script to gold, if you will. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get that notebook he's holding up. I've got one, too. We're going to get into that uh, in a little bit. That's where I think his mind was going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. And so with the Facebook ad example I was sharing before you got on, the script to me was failure is a value statement of who I am as a person. And when mm -hmm. I began to explore that lie, I was able to reframe failure as mm -hmm. feedback, but I mm -hmm. had to pause and I had to really deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get back to my screen share here. All right. Okay, so the other one that... Um, uh, I referenced was the health goal. And so I, I actually did put this in a 90 day uh, segment of time 
because there were specific things I wanted to accomplish. And one of the things, and I'm not an advocate for keto, uh, I don't believe there's a one size fit fits all. Uh, I'm not, I don't like to do diets, uh, neither does uh, Coach Greg, but I did need to find an eating plan that fit into my lifestyle, how I wanted to eat and how sensitive I am to carbs. And so uh, I now had to get knowledge and because I was very skeptical about it. And uh, so I read two books from two doctors that I have followed for years and trust their uh, perspectives. I also researched the pros and cons. And then I interviewed people that had done it, but not just anybody. I wanted to interview people that had blood tests uh, pre and post keto so that I could make sure uh, triglycerides and cholesterol and things like that uh, didn't go up because I, I don't eat dirty keto. I eat clean keto, but I still wanted to make sure. When I was getting the knowledge I need needed, I discovered a thing called keto flu. So now I'm like, okay, how do I combat that? I got that information. I purchased the things that I needed and I went to work uh, and was able to transition very easily. Uh, and I didn't really have many uh, personality constraints because I I'm very goal focused, so that didn't really bother me. Plus I'm gluten-free, so not having carbs wasn't that big of a deal. But then I wanted to go the next level. And that was to take my physical strength to a level I've not been able to accomplish myself since 2011. And so that's where I found Coach Greg. And well, actually he found me. And then the more we got to talking, the more we realized, okay, we both got things we can help each other with. So he is an example of a mentor, which is one of the knowledge aspects of the three to thrive. And here's the thing. If you can find a coach, a trainer, a mentor, uh, what will happen is you will accelerate your process and your progress and your goal and your project. And, uh, and so uh, we were talking this morning about how a true mentor uh, will guide you through the process. They won't always rescue you. They will guide you uh, through the process. And so uh, Coach Greg is mine as far as my health goal. Uh, do you have anything you want to add, uh, Coach Greg? Well, I, this morning you made the point that if we do not um, select someone that can help us in those areas that we are stuck, we won't get unstuck. We won't succeed if we don't reach out for that person. Uh, the great thing is um, our brain is always looking for someone to help us. So um, if you say to yourself, I really need help, then you suddenly find that there's people like Sherry or other people in your community that you know, um, they show up for you. That's the point where we need to begin to put the things in place so we can allow that support to take place and help us to make the changes we need. And one of the things that came to me that kind of shocked me myself earlier was about how a good mentor, again, will allow some of the struggle uh, and uh, I never thought about that, but they, they won't have all the answers. You know, they, uh, they will challenge, they, they will allow you to struggle and go through the process. And, uh, and that's important. You know, when you're looking for a mentor, you don't want an answer person. You want a Yoda, you want a Gandalf, you want someone that will guide you to your destination, not do it for you. We don't want any parents that are doing the kids homework. Right. Well, I don't know if there are any in, uh, on the line that are, but stop. <laughs> Bring the ugly stuff. That's what I like to say. Bring the ugly stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, um, I, okay. So I don't know. I forgot to ask Coach Greg in between the morning and the afternoon um, class if he minded, but the reason I use this picture is. Because, uh, he, you know, he, when you train with Coach Greg, it's not just you're training on Russian kettlebells. Um, when you train with him, you're actually in an emotional intelligence boot camp at the same time. And uh, so he is able to highlight and spot uh, habits, whether it's thinking habits or movement uh, patterns and habits that aren't serving you anymore. And uh, so anyway, 
I uh, sometimes am not aware of where my my body, like what my body's doing. And so he, he always has me like close my eyes just so I can, you know, figure that out. Well, we discovered that when I close my eyes and I do a move, I frown and I call that a fussy face. And when you have a fussy face, it creates a startle reflex. And so I guess I was doing that. I was not aware I was doing that. And Coach Greg was trying to think of the word, the phrase to alert me in the middle of my swings that I had a fussy face. And the only word that came to his mind was wrinkles, wrinkles. And uh, so anyway, we had a really good laugh about that because wrinkles and ladies do not usually go together. I didn't mind because I don't have that many. Now, if I did, I might have uh, minded a little bit. Anyway, we laughed so hard and uh, got that picture. So it's a lot of fun working out with them. Okay, so our training. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through an exact 90 day project and then we're going to have you do it as well. And then uh, I want to talk about the notebook that Coach Greg uh, will share with us. It was very powerful in the previous training we did. And so uh, the first thing you're going to do with your worksheets, and if you don't have them printed, then just grab a piece of paper or even do it on your computer, uh, but you want to write down the 90-day project or goal, and I want you to be very specific. Uh, if your goal is generalized, you're going to get generalized results, which means you probably won't get any, and so it really needs to be uh, specific and uh, I have an example here of my true crime podcast. So I have wanted to develop one of those for several years. And I dedicated at the beginning of this year, the third quarter to getting that done. Now I've got two other podcasts that I do, but this one was a little bit different. Uh, I first of all had to get some knowledge on, okay, what equipment and software do I need to record three people because I did it with my mother and my sister. So that's way different from doing it as uh, an individual. I also researched uh, the best and easiest process for writing scripts. Did I want to write the full script out? Did I want to have an outline with bullet points? Uh, how did I want to do that? Maybe a hybrid. And so I researched that, decided what I wanted to do. And then I also had to research the launch process. So uh, how many posts did I need to have? How many podcasts did I need to launch with? Did I wanna do uh, a serial or episodic podcast? And uh, so I, I looked at the pros and cons of all of those, decide how I wanted to do it. Uh, and then how many posts did I need for my Instagram, my social media? What social media did I need for a true crime podcast? So I researched all of those, probably plus a thousand more things. And then question two, okay, what skills do I need to have a successful true crime podcast and launch? And so obviously the script needed to be interesting. And uh, what did people want to hear? So I had to you know, develop that skill editing the script, editing the podcast, adding sound effects, all of those things um, I had to do. And then of course, building a website and using the equipment. So the website wasn't too hard for me because I do that for a living, but how I wanted it to flow and look and guide people through the experience was gonna be very important. So I wanted to up my game. Mm -hmm. And then the final uh, question was the personality constraints that might hinder me. I can't think of any because I'm a true crime freak. Uh, I would say maybe one of them would be being so focused on it, I did not want to do anything else. That's, that is a, a very much a D personality trait. And so I have customers to take care of and obviously couldn't do that. So maybe frustration of having to get off that to do other things was a personality constraint. So this kind of gives you an idea. Uh, a second one was paying off one uh, card and my car. And so I've been paying off cards for a while, but I wanted to combine the two within a quarter. And the quarter I chose for that was at the end of this year. Well, uh, I was able to do that uh, four months early on my car and uh, I think two to three months early on the card. And so what I did is I got uh, my budgeting strategy even more honed in. 
Uh, I recognized that old habit of just buying what I wanted was trying to rear its ugly head like we discussed earlier. So I had to be careful with that. Uh, I also had to figure out how much I needed to pay each month and then a marketing strategy to bring in more income. And so the skills I needed was, again, taking that budget to the next level, uh, new marketing skills, which I basically rebranded my entire website, Instagram, et cetera, which has probably doubled my income. And uh, so that was my marketing strategy and skill I used. And then also I did an inventory of other business skills that I can market to gain new clients. And uh, so once I got all of that done, uh, then I had to look at the personality constraints that might hurt, uh, hurt me. And one was I'm a shopper. Now I do save, I do have a savings account, but that's not my dominant um, personality. I do like to, to shop. And so I had to reframe that with uh, number one, pay myself first. I had to corral impatience. And then number three, recognize that what I'm doing is about to give me freedom that I've not had for a good four years. And uh, so these are just some of the, the examples. What I want you to do now is let's go ahead and do your homework. So I'm gonna give you a few moments and I want you to write down your 90 day project or goal. It can be business, professional, personal, relationship, uh, marriage, whatever you want it to be, go ahead and take a few moments to write it down. Okay. Uh, Coach Greg, did you have something? Oh, no, I was just getting some information loaded here for Ernie, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now that you've got your goal, and by the way, you'll, you'll know what knowledge you need uh, even more as you start to research and learn um, how uh, to accomplish your goal or your project. And I will have a couple people share at the end. Mm -hmm. So if your goal is personal, don't worry about it. But if it's something you could share, uh, that will be helpful. Okay, so question number one, I want you to go ahead and write down the knowledge that you're going to need to acquire to accomplish this project or goal. And uh, so what are the things you're going to need to learn? Go ahead and write those down uh, real quick. So while they're writing things down, I think I have a, a perfect one that goes with all three of these. So I have an opportunity to go on a... Um, um, a hunting trip later on in December. And so one of the things that I really had to do was um, knowledge on uh, rifles and hunting and equipment and accessories and clothing, <laughs> uh, weather, um, all of that preparation. I thought, oh my goodness. And then the skills, shooting, right? Understanding your weapon. Um, learning how to shoot in the cold. So needless to say, this past Sunday, I spent four hours in the cold, shivering, learning how to do that, right? And, but it was fun. Now, so when we talk about the personality constraint, wow, I could say that I didn't have one um, because I was excited, but the tendency to want to master um, the skills um, it would just take time. So I did have to have that grace and patience you mentioned for. So I was in a really bad car accident when I was in the military station in Great Britain. So uh, my right hand, I'm not able to shoot with my right hand and I'm right hand dominant. So I literally had to flip the script in my head and learn how to start shooting left-handed in addition to all of the other skills that we're actually talking about. I'm still in that process, so I'll let you know about the 16th of December, how all of that turned out. <laughs> um, That's really good. So, uh, and that kind of goes to um, what we were talking about earlier. And, you know, like the same thing with the True Crime Podcast, that's a passion, uh, you know, 
hunting is a passion of yours. I think both me and you like to learn new things as well. And so uh, when you're in your passion, doing something that you enjoy, it really does make it a lot easier and it can tend to be more motivated, which of course we'll get into the desire notebook later, but uh, I agree. I mean, it's so much easier to do the things that you love. Mm -hmm. Now on the personality constraint, I want to go ahead and get over to that snapshot. And if you want one of these, um, just let uh, let me get over here to it. Uh, let uh, Kim know in the chat because I will email this to you guys later. Let me get a little bit bigger. So on the personality constraints, I want to bring this up for you so that you can see which one yours might be. Now, I don't have time to go into all of the different personalities. Uh, I've got a lot of free training on that on my website, but uh, you can get your disc assessment done at Tony Robbins. I like his. Uh, if you want to purchase one, People Keys has a great one that you can uh, purchase. But knowing yourself is so key to accomplishing your goal goals. Excuse me. So for those of you that are D or the dominance personality, uh, here's some constraints for you: uh, loss of control being taken advantage of, feeling vulnerable, uh, limitations are lack of concern for others, impatience and insensitivity. Uh, I know that probably me and uh, Coach Greg can also add uh, being competitive and winning is very important for us. And so sometimes, you know, that mastery thing, we want it, you know, a week ago. Uh, so we can tend to get impatient or frustrated when we're learning new things if it's not going as fast as we want. So that's definitely a D trait uh, for the eyes. Uh, you guys are the influencers. You love social recognition and things like that. So your fears are social rejection, disapproval, loss of influence, or being ignored. And some of your limitations can be impulsiveness, disorganization, and a lack of follow through. And I would just highlight that for you guys uh, even more, especially with the goal setting. I have found that sometimes my eye clients can tend to get overwhelmed or they'll tend to procrastinate and have a fear, fear of failure involved. And, and we had a lady mention that earlier, that procrastination is a big problem for her. And that can tend to be an eye thing. Or if you feel failure, you might tend to put it off. And then the S personalities, which is 65% of the population, uh, your fears are loss of stability. Uh, you don't like change at all, a loss of harmony or offending others. And then your limitations can be over accommodating, meaning it's hard for you to say no. Well, if you can't say no and you're working on everybody else's stuff, you will never accomplish your own goals and projects. And then a tendency to avoid change and also indecisiveness. And then finally, the C personality. Your greatest fears are criticism, slipshod methods, and being wrong. And the slipshod methods and the limitations of being uh, having the tendency to overanalyze, the way that can manifest is you will stay in the knowledge aspect of the three to thrive and never execute what you learn. And so you want to really watch that. Uh, you can tend to be overly critical of yourself or others and tend to isolate yourself. So if you're a C personality, you want to watch what I call keeping that data gate open so long that you never uh, execute your, your goals. Okay, so let me get back over here and see if there's anything else. Okay, so before we get into the homework, I just want to, guys, I cannot uh, sing Coach Greg's praises enough. Um, it is not just training, it's an experience. And so I would encourage you to go to his website, Coaches Corner, that's corner with a K.com and check things out, call them. I mean, seriously, you're not only training physically, you're also training mentally. And then if you want any more resources or training, things like that, my blog posts, go to sherryannwilson.com. Okay, so let me uh, have someone volunteer. I don't want to call on anybody. So, but I will, because I'm a D, we don't mind that. Um, but if someone could share real quick, and then I want Coach Greg to talk to us about these notebooks. 
And make sure you unmute yourself and we wanna see you too. But if you're shy, just the audio is fine. All right, well, I have to call on somebody. Jan, can you share? Where'd she go? Oh, she didn't leave. Do we hear crickets? <laughs> we do. <laughs> hey, Jan, are you there? What do you want this to share about? I'm sorry, I am very distracted because I have two children and a husband in my house. Uh, the exercise we just did, your goal, the knowledge and the skill. Okay, so we need to share our goal, our knowledge and our skill. I thought it was about the personality thing. I was like, well, I know what I am. Okay, um, so our goal, personality and skill well, I think I've been distracted enough. I cannot answer your question, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Jan, were you able to do the exercise? Okay, can you share? <laughs> I see her hand signal, but I don't hear anything. <laughs> and she's not muted, so I don't know. I don't either. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Alyssa, or Kim, do you have anything? Well, I I could put one of them. I put um, to get back into the gym. Oh, yeah, because oh. I, I, I used to live in the gym, you know, morning, noon and night. And um, yeah. And what skills do you need to execute your plan? Quit being lazy. <laughs> they get up and do it well you know? and I make excuses too because you know right now there's health issues going on with my father so you know I'm like okay if I go there but I want to be at the gym but I'm like I'll feel guilty if I'm not at with my dad at this certain time because that's what he's used to right now you know and it's yeah well, and there, there are, you know, like we were talking about this morning, thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. I would say as far as the knowledge aspect, I would start there. Uh, number one, why do you feel guilty? Um, how yeah. can you uh, yeah. do it in a way where maybe it doesn't affect your dad? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are just so many options. There might be um, some research and knowledge you can gain that will then help you start exercising the skill uh, and that was a pun on purpose and then as far as being lazy I, that would be an emotional intelligence issue as well so I would probably start with knowledge because I can guarantee now if you go see coach Greg he'll give you the skill oh, oh I know that it's just it's just getting there <laughs> that's that's the key you know so I'll, I'll let me elaborate a little bit more my father was just diagnosed with severe Alzheimer's and dementia yeah so it's like every minute you know? yes yeah yeah that's tough my mother-in-law had that and uh so you know there are real life things that can prohibit you but as far as the the guilt and things like that i would definitely explore that because that's actually i found when i used to do personal training it seems to be a female issue mm -hmm. um i had i don't know how many women that felt guilty for training and to me i'm like well, I would feel guilty for not training because I want to be the best person I can when I'm in my 90s and I want to see right. great, great so, grandkids. So I was in probably the best shape I had ever been in when I was doing that. And then at one time I was dating a gentleman who was like, oh my God, you look like a dude because I was cut. I was like, boom, in shape. And then, you know, when you sit back and you look at everything, he was jealous. Uh, yes that's what that was and I'm like why did I let that get to me you know it's like I put their feelings over what I know you know but yeah and it's yeah. just now getting back I got to get back to that state of mind that I was in like you know the gym it makes my health better it does all of this you know so for me that would then turn into revenge I would turn my guilt into revenge true <laughs> being a d <laughs> yeah yeah 
Okay. All right. Do we have uh, anybody that has one more? Um, I don't know if you do, Alyssa. I don't want to call on you if you don't, because I know you're uh, busy at work. But I, I have one, but I'm not exactly sure how to execute it. Okay. Go ahead um, and share it. Well, the my goal is to be able to get out of work on time. Enough of, I've had enough of this going home at 1130 at night. It's awful. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm already, you know, taking steps. You're helping me trying to find some worthwhile people that'll stay and work. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think I probably, the knowledge I need to get is maybe how to manage my time better somehow. Um, get people trained better. Maybe I need knowledge on how to train people faster. I, I don't really, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, my personality is great. So I think he's got some suggestions. Oh, well, please, please forgive me, but I love the name that I see on the screen. The first word I see is elusive. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets away from me, right? So, um, so in the work I do, um, being definite is critical. So the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that was, Maybe I would change that word to um, definite or definitive or something that says that that's who you are. Um, now, of course, if somebody is trying to waste your time, then I think elusive is a great word. <laughs> um, but that was the first thing that I, when I was listening, I thought, wow, that's an interesting word. Um, now, is that a name? Or I, I only put it on there because I don't have a computer that has the sound and the you can't see me. I don't have the um, the camera to where you can actually see me. So I was being elusive because I'm not. You can't see me. <laughs> but also, her, one of her fascination advantages, she's a power and a mystery. Oh, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, <laughs> I like it, by the way, just just to be clear, I was like, I really like it, but it stuck it, it stood out to me um, when I heard like, well, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. And the first thing that came to my mind was I looked at that word Elusive. and that word, that word suggests that whatever it is we're trying to do, it escapes us somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to get our power back, then having words that suggest in our imagination that we actually do have a way of establishing definiteness in our ability to achieve our goals, yeah. whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, and we're about to get into that. But uh, Alyssa, I do think taking a time inventory might be good. And us tweaking some processes. Um, because you're right now you're like super busy because of the housing market. Right. And the lack of you know people. So if you if you guys know of someone that's a people person slash uh, attentive to detail that's a good worker, please let us know. Um because okay. we have a couple positions to fill, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think the first place to start, Alyssa, would be gaining knowledge in your processes and your, um, hey, typical baby. work day. How many times are you interrupted? And also <laughs> how many times do you self interrupt? Ooh. Cause self interrupt is where you're working and all of a sudden, you know, you're checking your phone or checking your email or whatever. Now, sometimes you have to do that because you're expecting a text or an email that's very important uh, to what you're currently doing. So I'm not referring to those, but I'm referring to any self interruptions. And um, so we can definitely talk more, but that's where I would start. I would look for those and I would look at your processes uh, and, 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 like how you carry out your work, uh, we probably need to do an inventory of that. And even how much uh, or how many times your staff interrupts you for things that they don't need to interrupt you for. Uh, so those would be some areas. 
I would start gaining some knowledge on. Okay, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, uh, then after you do that, we'll need to get you some skills on how to stop some of that. So um, I'll be in touch soon anyway, because of what we're working on. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Sounds great, thank you. All right, coach, so before we go, I want you to talk about the journal. Okay, <clears throat> so I was looking for this this morning. So um, I was set to start on the 27th of um, May um, here in Clovis. And um, I started back in March <clears throat> um, preparing myself. I came down, I took a look in the community. Well, one of the things that I did was um, on a sheet of paper, I listed 18 different things that I needed to have for my business, for myself personally, for my family, and also being able to interact with the community. Please forgive me for all that paperwork. But the reason why I wanted to show you is that absolutely every one of these things that I wrote down um, is, an, is a living experience for me currently here in Clovis. Now, the reason why we talk about writing things down and using blue ink to write things down in your journal. This is a different one than I had this morning. This was the very, this was my coming to Clovis um, piece. Okay. You see, I write in it every day. And so one of the things about establishing a habit is repetition. One of the things that we don't understand is, is that our brain is picking up a habit whether we're actively engaged in it or not. So how you deal with your workplace, how we deal with our family, there are things that we can just passively allow to uh, become a part of our thinking patterns without even realizing it. And before you know it, you have emotionally tuned into certain types of habits that before you realize it, they are a part of your active life. So when you decide that you're going to change some form of habit, or you want to start something new. A lot of times we use the word diet. The reason I don't like to use the word because there's too much associated with it that our psyche just rejects, especially if we haven't succeeded. Yeah. One of the examples that I used this morning was to cleanse and strengthen the body. That can mean anything, right? You want your imagination to support whatever your efforts are. Okay, so when you write in your book in Blue Ink, the first thing you do is you, is you stimulate your imagination. The second thing you do when you write in your book daily and you only write things in your book that you have a strong belief in that you want, that you believe you can uh, accomplish. So for me, on a scale of one to 10, I don't write anything down that's not at least an eight. And the reason for that is it just simply means that my mind is not focused on it. If you cannot keep your mind focused on something that you want to achieve, you cannot develop it as a new habit, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, it looks like, wow, he just has a lot of stuff written in that book. I do. But it's the same thing over and over again. And what happens is it becomes a part of my everyday thinking process. So when stress hits me or some other challenging or something out of the way my brain is not distracted by what's actually coming into my life oh i got a new employee to train or the um, the customers keep interfering or whatever it is that would distract you my brain picks up on the habit that i established in this book so i never get away from it and so then the next beautiful thing that happens every time i accomplish something that i write down in this book I get to remove that and then number two becomes number one, number three becomes number two and so forth. And then I include another one. Um, I wish I could say that I invented this technique, but that's not true. Uh, most powerful, successful things on the planet have already been written before. And so I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of um, the principles of individual achievement, Napoleon Hill back in 19, 37, 
um, when he first came out with these pieces and I have been following him for years. Um, I have found that this is the most consistent way to be able to get your mind to tune in to not only to change a habit that you want to get rid of, but to establish new ones. Write it down. Make sure, first of all, is something that you really want to achieve. That would be number one. Don't write in anything down to show the version about. Um, and go ahead, Sherry. And one of the things you said that uh, I didn't catch this the first time you taught this in our first training was you write it down and then you flesh out what it will look like. Uh, yeah. The process, which is, that's the desire aspect. That's the aspiration aspect, which is mm -hmm. more pow powerful for change than pain point motivation. Yeah, so I would say, um, like right now, you can sit down and say, I want to achieve this as a goal. The minute you think the thought, there's generally going to be an image associated with it. When you get to the point where what you're thinking you want to achieve is also held in your imagination, then you know it's close. And so like here on this sheet of paper, so this was my first working sheet, right? I had con gone to Clovis. I looked around the community. I had an idea of what I wanted to do. So I came back and I wrote it on this, these huge sheets of paper because I had a lot of detail. And once I got all the detail cleared it, clear in my mind, then I transferred it to my journal because okay. now I knew exactly what that was. So when I wrote it down, I knew exactly what, it, what I wanted and I knew what it would look like. I knew the building would have a ceiling height of 15 feet at least, a square foot of at least 4, 000, 4 to 5,000 square foot, the kind of people that I wanted to meet, the kind of service I wanted to deliver. So I wrote down all of that so I would have a way to direct my thoughts to those ends. And that's reprogramming your subconscious. So I want to uh, tell you two things that happened to me and we'll conclude. When... I first did this exercise, I went blank. Now I have in my phone, my dream list. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, no big deal. And then I sat down, it's like, I couldn't think of a single thing that I wanted to accomplish. And so your subconscious will sometimes be like, what? It'll freeze and you can't bring forth, you know, the things you want to do. So I just referred back to my dream list and really started thinking that happened. And then um, I did get a, a, a pretty journal. You don't have to get a pretty journal. I got a pretty journal because uh, I knew it helped me do it more. But what happened was I had a surprising desire. And I shared it this morning that my grandfather, uh, he was my best friend. We watched Gunsmoke every single day. Um, he died October 24th, 2016. And when I sat down to write my out of a scale of one to 10, my eight to tens. Uh, I, when he died, I didn't have the money to put his death date on the tombstone and now I can. And so that, that was one of the things that I put stars next to and that really uh, was my deal. So that's my goal before the end of the year is to make that a reality. And so you might be surprised at some of the desires that come up. Do you have any quick uh, comment before we go on? All of a sudden, you're like blank. You're like a deer caught in headlights. Like, what is that? Uh, no, are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, I think what actually happens is, is that um, our self-conscious knows us. As we say, that's, that's the one entity that's with us all the time, 24-7, and it never takes a break. It's sort of, I like to think of it as like a governor. You say, yeah, I want to do this, and your subconscious is like, really really you really want to do that and then once you are determined that it's true then it's almost like it opens up it's sort of like a dweller at the threshold once you make the commitment that that's what you want to do then your subconscious becomes an ally instead of a saboteur so it's almost like it's like yeah we've been here and done that before and nothing changed so when you take this step it's like it's like okay are we really doing this Exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's like exactly you said, what it is. this isn't a journal where you write your diary. This is just for 
the, the things you want to accomplish that are on a high level desire. It's, it's like going from dating to getting married. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get one of these unless you want to get married. <laughs> you're going to be married to that dream. That's how I look at it. It's like, no matter what, I'm with you from, from now until it's exactly. done. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, does anybody have any questions? Because it's three after I want to keep you guys. Do y'all have any questions before we go? Just want to say thank you, Sherry, so much for um, everything that you've done for us this year. And Coach Greg, I'm glad that you've been in, in a, you've been in more than two seminars, but you've been a presenter with Sherry, you know, her sidekick for two of them. Yeah. So just yeah. Want to say. <laughs> I think I always, I think I mentioned him in every single seminar since I yeah. started training. Yeah. <laughs> so he's your sidekick, you know, yeah, he's there. So thank well, you. I appreciate you guys in the chamber and uh, we'll hopefully coach Greg can do some more stuff with us next year. Uh, and I've got some other ideas. We'll see if we can do that. But I appreciate you, Coach Greg, and the chamber and everybody that attended today. So have a safe holiday. Stay well. And we'll be back in January. Yeah. Thank all of you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.